SEC bias. Now, let me quickly give you a backstory. The other day on Twitter, I had a little back and forth. We were, I think, initially talking about expanding the college football playoff and you know how against that I am for a myriad of different reasons if you want them listed some of which at least go back and watch the last live show so here's what happened someone criticized the southeastern conference for not stepping up to the plate when it comes to scheduling out of conference games I've always found much irony in this claim because as everyone criticizes SEC out of conference scheduling they never acknowledge the conference schedule. For example, someone actually pointed out to me that Texas A&M played, I don't know who it was, Lamar, some some FCS team from this past year. And I said, really, this is the road you want to go down? This is the hill you want to die on? Texas A&M last year, do you guys remember this? They, of course, played Alabama in the regular season. They have to do that every year. It's a rule. It's called a division game. They had to play LSU. Got to do it every year. Had to play Auburn. And if you want to go down the out-of-conference route, do you know who else they played? If that wasn't bad enough, they went ahead and scheduled Clemson. So they played three or four or five playoff caliber teams. Guys, I don't care if they scheduled a couple of high schools. I really don't. I don't say that facetiously. If they actually added Katy High School onto the schedule... After they went through all that, I wouldn't care. So a lot of folks started criticizing eight-game conference schedule versus nine-game conference schedule, scheduling FCS teams versus not scheduling FCS teams. And really, it's never mattered to me much when it comes to the SEC because largely, especially in the Western division, you're going to get enough strength of schedule push, in my mind, from just your division schedule that I've never really cared who you play out of conference. Having said that, pretty much every major program down here that I can tell has stepped up, and they do play pretty good out-of-conference competition. You're going to find your exceptions. I'm going to find the overwhelming majority being on the other side of that fence. A&M just played Clemson. Georgia's got like 100 home-and-homes coming up with all kind of elite competition. So let's get the scheduling dynamic out of the way. To me, anyone who questions the validity of an SEC schedule is like a flat earther. Why would I waste time arguing with that? So here's what happened. What happened ultimately, as is often the case, is claims of SEC bias were thrown at me. Now, I want to start off by telling you very plainly, so there's no misunderstanding, I have got strong SEC bias, very strong SEC bias. You don't need to accuse me of it. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm going to tell you. But yet you rarely hear me talk Kentucky football on the show. You rarely hear me talk Vanderbilt football on the show. I don't think we've done a Missouri segment in quite a while. So which SEC teams are we talking about? I've talked Ohio State, for example, a lot more than I've talked about Tennessee lately. It almost seems like we just care about the good teams. I think this is the best conference in America. Therefore, I do have a strong bias, aside from where I grew up. I have a strong bias towards talking about them, just so we're clear on that. So let's move on, because that's not really what you should care about. What you should really care about is, is there fairness? Not does someone like your team or not. Not does someone have bias for or against your team, your rival, another conference. Is there fairness? Think a lot of times about watching a broadcast of your team and you have a duo in the booth and you either, well, most of the time you don't realize that they like your team or not. Most of the time the claim is fill in the blank. You know, everyone in the South thinks Gary Danielson, the color guy for CBS, hates their team. I've never cared at all about whether Gary Danielson is rooting for, secretly or openly, the team that I pull for. What I've cared about, always have and always will, with an analyst or anyone else, is are they fair with a college football playoff committee member? Don't care who they root for. Are they fair? And as long as an analyst is giving the action to me on the field straight, I don't care if I know for a fact he hates my team. Is he fairly critiquing? Is he fairly analyzing? All I care about. A lot of people go a step further, and they want to believe that you either love or hate their team. Most of the time, shades of gray at the very best. But let's talk about this for a second. So I get some claims thrown at me the other day. I wrote them all down. I said, this will make good fodder for the Thursday night show. The SEC is overrated because they play FCS teams to boost their record. We all know pretty much that's garbage, so let's move on. The SEC bias, though, particularly in the media and in the college football playoff selection process, is really what I wanted to dive into. So let's say it out loud, and I want you to think right along with me at home there, driving around in your car, however you're consuming the show. Do you believe that there is a concerted effort in the college football world 
to prop the SEC up and, more importantly, not from the media side of things, but from the college football playoff side of things, do you believe there's a concerted effort in the college football world to give them an inside track or just outright fix it where they have spots pre-selected for them at the table? Yes or no? You can decide in your own mind. We're not in a situation now where we have a live studio audience where they can answer. My question, for those of you who truly believe that this sport is largely rigged and predetermined, A, I don't think you actually believe that, and I'll get around to that in a second, but B, for the time being, let's say you claim it is. Who is in on it? By default, for anything that's fixed, for anything that's rigged, there has to be somebody in on it. And with this SEC bias, overwhelming, as it sounds to me, based on how many people mentioned it to me, got to be a lot of people in on it. So let's talk about it for a second. A lot of people throw around media bias, and to me, that's largely irrelevant because you have a system now where in the media no longer votes in a poll that determines anything. We're post-BCS era, we're post-AP poll era, and so you could argue that, well, maybe they still have influence, but as opposed to what it was like 20 years ago, the media influence, even if there is extreme bias towards one conference or the other, and that changes like the season, more on that in a second, even if there is that, we're in a post-BCS, post-AP poll era. Right now, there's a committee of people that decides the playoff, so it shouldn't matter. But let me ask you this. Let's just go down that media route for a second. Let's go down that rabbit hole. Who's in on it? Who is it? Who's really pulling the lever? Is it right out in the open? Are they behind the curtain over here? And again, I ask, for all the SEC bias, why does the SEC bias extend to Ohio State? Buckeyes get plenty of coverage on this show and elsewhere. Clemson, over the last half decade, seems they've gotten a fair amount of attention, does it not? Colin, I think we've heard Clemson's name more than a few times. It seems to me like Oklahoma has gotten a fair amount of coverage. Could I take you back... I guess it's been 15 to 20 years now, the early to mid-2000s. Most of you were around at the time. Many of you were old enough to understand what you were watching at the time. Do you remember, like I do, who dominated the sport? Do you remember who the sport revolved around in the early to mid-2000s? It was USC, and I don't mean the one in Columbia, South Carolina. Let me tell you what people in the South said back then. People in the South People where I was from in Columbus, Georgia, people in Tuscumbia, Alabama, people in Franklin, Tennessee, and everywhere around the South, you know what they said? There is media bias against us down here in favor of the lights and the glitz and the glamour and the Hollywood appeal that is University of Southern California football. And you know what? They were right. We were right. And do you know why? Programs like Alabama sucked when Southern Cal was dominating. No one in 2003 was trying to push Alabama into the BCS championship game. They may have been trying with USC. Point being, USC had to be good long before they received the benefit of any bias. Just like Alabama and anyone down here in the South has to be good before they receive the benefit of any bias. What happened is my question. If there was extreme media bias on the left coast in the early to mid 2000s, did people change their allegiance? Did folks just decide they wanted to become Georgia fans? Was there a natural transition from being a Texas Longhorn and a Southern Cal Trojan fan to, you know what, I think I'm going to go pull for Florida or Alabama. How did that happen? It's almost like programs in a cyclical fashion, which is the way the sport always has been and always will be, tapered off and others got really, really good. And maybe in a region of the country where there is, per capita, more fan passion and interest and desire and a rabid nature to win at all cost mentality that is so prevalent here. Maybe that tide ended up, as we show Nick Saban in Alabama on the screen, that tide, figuratively speaking, was able to raise a lot of boats. But let's continue because the college football playoff, again, is what this is all about. And that is the season, college football playoff selection season, where you hear more so than any other time in the year, there is SEC bias. This team gets benefit of the doubt. This team doesn't. And so, again, I ask, where and who, really, is the better question, who is in on the SEC bias? Think about the college football playoff selection committee. Who's on it? Pat Dye, Gene Stallings, Vince Dooley? No. 
None of them are on it. In fact, I've got last year's college football playoff committee here. You stop me when you hear the SEC bias. Gary Barta, Iowa AD. Uh, Paola Boyvin, Arizona State faculty. Tom Berman, Wyoming, athletic director. Joe Castiglione, Oklahoma, athletic director. Rick George, Colorado, athletic director. Ken Hatfield, former Rice, Air Force, Arkansas, and Clemson head coach. Ronnie Lott, former USC DB. We've got the Arkansas State athletic director here. We've got a former Army chief of staff. We've got R.C. Slocum, A&M coach and interim athletic director. That is the first whiff that I've had so far of SEC allegiance. We've got Todd Stansberry. He's the Georgia Tech athletic director. Scott Strickland is the AD at Florida. There's two. And then we've got the former Penn State offensive tackle, John Urschel. Who's in on it? I didn't sense a ton of overwhelming SEC flavor in this list. Did they all just get together? Did a former Penn State offensive tackle and a Georgia Tech athletic director and a, a bunch of dignitaries and ADs from out west, did they get together and say, forget about where we're from and forget about what would be in our selfish personal best interest. We got to be in the tank for the SEC. But yet some people still stand by this argument. So here's my final question. If I cannot convince people, I mean, the NFL has got to be in on it too, right? Because when I look at the NFL draft, it's littered with SEC players top to bottom. You have not seen this year's draft yet, but you, as well as I know, who's going to dominate the field? It happens every year. Are they in on it? I think I did some rough math earlier today. Over 70% of NFL franchises are out of the SEC blueprint, footprint, whatever you want to call it. Are they still in on it anyway? It's got to be a really concerted effort. And this is a really big operation to have a lot of folks that have nothing to do with SEC football and all the NFL general managers and scouts with their jobs on the line, by the way. Media members, coast to coast, everyone's in on SEC bias. And if that's the case, which of course is laughable, but if you're going to stick by it, and if that is the case, why do you watch? Because a lot of you if I were to ask you if you watch pro wrestling right now, would laugh, which is fine. And I would ask you what you're laughing for. Why don't you watch pro wrestling? And you would say, well, it's fake. I would argue there's a difference between fixed and fake. But you would argue, at the very least, it's predetermined. It's choreographed. The outcome is already known before the match starts. Why would I watch that? Which is fine. To each his own. But the same folks who would laugh at watching pro wrestling claim college football's rigged, and yet you watch it every day which in and of itself is how I know you don't really believe what you're saying. Because if you really believed it was rigged, you wouldn't watch. Let me ask you this. If I were to be able to tell you in this thermos that I have absolute truth, God has placed absolute truth in this thermos, and whatever is real is in there. And tonight, we're going to be able to open that thermos and pour out the true answer as to whether this entire process is rigged for the SEC's benefit to get in this playoff if the real answer is in here and you had to bet your life savings one way or the other, what would you bet is in that thermos? What would you bet? Life savings on the line. I don't know what that's worth right this second, but life savings are on the line. You know this is not rigged. And you know that even though there may be some favoritism that is earned, I would argue it's not given, it's earned based on benefit of the doubt that's garnered after a long, lengthy track record of success. I don't have a problem with people getting benefit of the doubt or programs or conferences. There's nothing rigged about this. It's tilted towards the best. And the best continue to do what the best do. Just like attention in this sport goes towards the best. We talk about the best on this show all the time. I can tell you without having ever seen our blueprint or outline for this season, we're going to talk LSU a lot. We're going to talk Alabama a lot. We will talk uh, Georgia a lot, and we probably will talk Florida a pretty good deal. a and ball's in their court right now. You know who we probably won't talk a lot about, though, is Arkansas. I don't think they're going to have a particularly good year this year, and I don't know what we'll do with the Mississippi schools. And the point is, if they got that SEC helmet sticker on the back and SEC bias is supposed to be binding, then... Why is our attention going towards the bigger programs? For the same reason we're going to talk a ton about Clemson and Ohio State and Oklahoma, because they're dominant, and we care about dominant. That's where our bias lends us towards, dominance. So those are the programs that we care to talk about.